In today's video, we're gonna check out some creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. This video is going viral of a guy that captured something in his shower drain and it's unlocking a new fear for anyone that sees it. So I just had to find out what the heck that thing is. And I guess it's called a Tubi Flex Worm. And honestly, I don't care. I agree with this user right here. We gotta find out how to kill it. That was just the start of a whole new civilization down there. They just need to get rid of all of the plumbing at this point. Well, looky here. This is a medallion, also called a galvanic battery. It's a specific combination of seven metals. And I'm pretty sure that's what they're wearing. You see, I got this to experiment and I learned that it charges you even more when it is in salt water or when you perspire. So I was gonna encase it into a sweat band. And then I remember these guys. What if that's what they were doing? They had these on certain parts of their body, just like those armaments. These are armbands at different parts of their meridian body. You see, our body is made of this energetic pathway and different crystals and metals affect it. And what if they were using this for health and not for teleportation like I thought? That's still possible. I'm gonna go work up a sweat, put this on, and see what happens. This is really cool. I like this. I've never really heard anything about the bracelets that the Anunnaki worn. Never even really noticed it. The only thing I've ever heard anyone talk about were the bags that they carry. But this was a really interesting one, and they're probably onto something. It probably really is to help your health. I mean, even to this day, we have copper bands and things like that that can supposedly help arthritis and whatnot. So this is actually probably right on the right path. What do you guys think? Do you think it's for health or do you think that it was for teleportation and telekinesis and all that? You never heard about the mighty Adam. No, hallelujah, man. This guy, 130 pounds, strongest man in the world. People go, eh, yeah, right. Six of 12 pennies, you'll bite in half, right straight through. Give him a horseshoe, or what uh, form you want to have it? Question mark. Joel Greenstein, the mighty Adam. Police says, we came there to save the crowd from him, not to save him from the crowd. He bit through nails, broke chains, and held down an airplane with his hair. Well, Zango Headley beat up 20 Nazi sympathizers. Wow. They shot him in his forehead because the guy was in love with his wife and didn't penetrate the skull. What the fuck? And they go to a uh, dentist and he checks out his teeth and while he's doing it, bites the metal thing as well. <laughs> bites it in half. <laughs> the guy writes about it. <laughs> what are you gonna do against a guy like that? That's crazy. This guy was like superhuman for real. This is pretty neat. I've never heard of this individual before. I'm gonna have to do some more research on my own time. This isn't really a conspiracy or a theory. I'm pretty sure this is real history. I get that you can bite through nails and stuff, but sir, I'm trying to work on your teeth. Please don't bite my instruments. If you've ever pulled an all-nighter, you'll notice something interesting. As morning rolls around, you'll suddenly feel an increase in your energy and alertness again, even though adenosine has been building up for the entire night. The reason that is, is because there's a second force which is governing when you sleep and when you're awake. And inside all of us is a clock that exists in your brain and my brain and the brain of every animal that we're aware of that determines when we want to be sleepy and when we want to be awake. I think that I am a nocturnal creature. <laughs> as funny as that sounds, I am more able to sleep during the day than at night. When nighttime comes, I have the hardest time sleeping. I barely get any sleep. If I'm lucky, I get four maybe four and a half hours of sleep every night because I either toss and turn. I just, I just can't get to sleep. But anytime during the day, if I wanted to take a nap, I could do that. But once nighttime hits, I can't. And it, it bothers me so bad. Do any of you guys have any problem sleeping or any preferred time of the day to sleep? And if you have trouble sleeping, what are the best methods that you guys have to sleep because I really could use some good sleep at night. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. This is coming over real low. Look here, Teddy. Look right there. See it coming? This is uh, December 5th. I'm out here with my grandson. 
standing at my front door. And it's just coming. Yeah, you see it? What do you think it is? That's my grandson, three years old. He just said it's an angel. You see it? Look right there. Let's get around this tree here. You see this look? Here we go. Sorry for the bouncing, but I'm having to walk. I'm literally standing right at my front door with my grandson. We're walking. And no, it's turning. It's turning due south now. It was going from my right to left. And now it's going away from me, you see? It made a turn right there. December 5th. This is our, you see, property. And there's another one going through the trees right there. I just saw it flash twice. I can find this horse. Where you at, Teddy? I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming, baby. I just walk. I'm over here. The airplane right there. Look. This is... Yeah, you see? Look. Look at it going away. See? It's heading south now. Was well, heading east. This is... uh. December 5th, 2023. Came out of the west, heading east, and then turned right over our house to the south. Vanishing now. Thank you. I've been doing some research on this Chris fellow. I think it's Chris Bledsoe. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name. But this individual, I feel like he is genuine. He's got good reactions. He's He's got the whole family basically involved. And he's got amazing interviews. He's got great photos and videos. Like This guy has been through a lot, apparently, in the UAP UFO community. Whether they're angels or aliens, I'm not quite sure because he depicts them as aliens, but then in some interviews he calls them angels. I don't know if they're just two separate things that are interacting with this individual, but he actually has some really interesting content. I'm going to start bringing it in more and more to this channel because it's really good. Let me know if that's okay. If not, then I won't, but I do enjoy his content a lot. It is, it is pretty good. There is an energy field around the heart, and they found through their experimentation that depending on your mental state, it changes the energy readings of your actual heart, the heart-brain connection. Yeah, I want to hear this. It is not as commonly known that the heart actually sends more signals to the brain than the brain sends to the heart. They've actually discovered that there are about 80,000 neurons in the heart. 80,000? Now – Res neurons. respectively that's not a lot no but we're talking the, there's trillions but, in the brain but it there's neurons it thinks yes in a in a limited capacity it thinks. in other words not only does the heart respond to the brain but the brain continuously responds to the heart during stress and, and negative emotions when the heart rhythm pattern it's erratic it's disordered the corresponding pattern of neural signals traveling from the heart to the brain inhibit higher cognitive functions limiting our ability to think more clearly remember learn reason Make effective decisions. Hey, you know what that sounds like? Low bright, low vibrational fear. Yeah. You know how like fear puts it you in a fogs low. our faculties of our mind. In contrast, the more ordered and stable 
pattern of the heart's input to the brain during positive emotional states has the opposite effect. It facilitates higher cognitive function and reinforces positive feelings and emotional stability. Real quick, that that just that just puts the nail in the coffin of the importance of mental health right there. Like for sure. You you can't actually function like as a human if you're not taking care of yourself. I definitely think that you should always take care of yourself. I think that you should always stay calm and positive in all situations that you can. Not every situation is a calm or positive situation, so I know it's not something that you can always do. But it is something that you should try to de-stress yourself as much as possible because it really does weigh on the heart a lot. I know it does. I've seen family that has been brokenhearted and basically died of a broken heart. I've seen people that were so stressed that it gave them a heart attack and they were perfectly healthy otherwise. It, it's pretty crazy on what can happen if you do not take care of the heart. I recommend doing the best you can for it because it, it's what keeps you going. <laughs> so I crawled, dragging that gun under these trees until I got about 20 feet from that orb, 20, maybe 30 feet. And the electricity from it, the buzz the static, my whole body felt like needles. The hair was standing up and every bump, goose bump on me was just tingling. And the energy was so strong, I couldn't go any closer. I just turned around and I backed away, walked back out of the forest, crawled out. And I got to the, the pine trees where the fence was crunched. I stood up and I went to step over that fence. And the minute I went to step over that fence, there were two of these beings just appeared right in front of me, one on, I mean, they were standing like three feet from me and just enough gap I could walk between them. And immediately I felt this shame come over me, shame that I had this rifle, why I brought this to fight something that there ain't no fighting, right? So I took the gun and I tried to hide it behind me. And what they put in my head was what changed me. From that point on, I never hunted again. I don't harm bugs. I have uh, a way with animals now nobody understands. I have 50, 100 ducks, wild ducks who fly in and fly right up to me. If you come out there, they're gone. But they'll fly right up and eat from me, feed them wild mallards. And if anybody knows about mallard ducks, they're one of the most skittish mm. creatures in the world. They fly at you know, thousands of feet high at 80 miles an hour, and you need duck calls and blinds and decoys in the water to get one to land. Well, I have whole flocks of them fly right in and eat. I can feed them. But that wasn't like that before. But these beings told me that they changed me. They told me that um, the way they put it in my head, when I say told me, they don't really talk. They put images that you know. It's just telepathic, I guess you mm -hmm. could say. But it made me understand that the whole world is... Um, is a living, is alive, everything from the grass to every single animal, bird, tree, all had a consciousness. They even put images into me uh, of the cells in the body. Like in, within the human body, there, are, there so you don't tell your body what to do. Something outside of us is telling our body how to function, the molecules, the, the, um, each cell that divides from one cell to the other has a conscience. So um, I'm just a part of that. Uh, I can't get the words out I want to say, um, but it just changed me in such a way that I began to cry about everything. I've cried for the last seven, eight, ten years, I guess about everything. When I see something get hurt, it just kills me. But it came from that experience with these beings on how they told me how everything's a living consciousness and I don't have the right to take its life, that um, we live in a mutualistic way. Like the, the, your stomach, for example. 
you have bacteria in your stomach mm. that digest chlorophyll, plant material. The human can't do it, but this bacteria does. And it secretes the nutrients that you get from that plant. And it survives because you're feeding it the, the plant material. Right? So it's a mutualistic way we live. And mm -hmm. it's like a tree gives you wood for a house. It gives you shade for the sun, a nest for a bird, oxygen to breathe. And the list goes on. So everything has a part of life on this planet, and it's not up to us to destroy it and abuse it. And it's, I could talk about this for days. Wow. This is a pretty interesting interview. This is one of the interviews that I was talking about. He doesn't really go and say that they are aliens. I think he considers them as spiritual beings. It just makes me wonder why... Did they choose this individual? Why did they choose this Chris fellow and not so many other people? Why not unlock this feeling for everyone so that everyone has the same understanding and the same feeling so that they understand that what they are doing is harmful? I would just like to know why they contacted him personally, and I don't think that he's ever went in an interview talking about that. It just so happens that he ran across entities and they helped him in so many different ways and they communicate with him through different ways as well this is very interesting how long have you been a herbalist uh, from 1977 yeah and my age is 141 years old now you are 141 years old right now so is your medicine make you live so long i mean i have no sugar i mean i have no pressure I mean, I have no heart attack, I mean, I have no pain. I mean, I know my farm, I mean, do everything, say me. Yeah, man, I have children, so my granddaughter, they so. I sit down, see me, and my daughter, and Judith, and my son, them. And I know. Yeah. How long did it take you for perfect your formula? Well, I work with the moon. And the moon is that give you, like, when the moon is kind of full, and the new moon, it's try to prepare your herbs and before the moon full then you will boil your herbs so I do soak my herbs and after soaking them then I throw them off and prepare them put them into the bottle and so forth so I work with humanity I'm a healer through the power of the most high so I heal through the herbs herbs and water so no matter what the problem you have there are something in the herbs for you because the most high said every leaves of the tree are healing up in the nation you know what I mean? So then we must attain ourselves to the herbs. Yeah? And the herb will heal us. Cramp, pain, and all of them something. The bats tomorrow. Because look, in year 2002, the doctor di diagnosed me for cancer. Say I have cancer. And say if me, he said, go cut me. And if me not cut me, now live longer than six months. I may prove him wrong with my medicine. Me not have no cancer. Because guess what? We all born with cancer cell. So when the doctor, when they say oh, cancer, you're supposed to find the cause before the cure. What's the cause? Yes, just about something and burn up your cells. Not true? It's true. So then if you go take chemo now, you're not going to burn out the whole of your cells then. Not true? Yeah, you're not going to have no cells left. You're going to be dead. <laughs> so have you been back to a doctor since? No, my daughter. My daughter do a lot of tests. Yes, yeah, so I mean, to see what's going on inside of the system, and then we know the cold and we can go along with the herbs. So we do me test them, and you know what they say? I don't have cancer, me free from it because I do more tests when one say I have cancer, and I don't live longer than six months. I go and do more tests again, and that the one say, boy, I no don't cancer. And one man say, you're born with cancer cell. Say, if I'm born with cancer cell, how oh, you yeah, go burn out the wall of your cells? If anyone knows anything about this individual, please leave a comment down below letting me know because I would like to do a little bit more research on this just to see if what she's saying is true, if she's really 141 years old or older depending on the time of this video has been released. But this is interesting if that's the case. And I mean, everything about her is really nice. She has great looking skin. She's got a great looking smile. Her accent's nice. And I just really want to know, is she really 141? There is a flying car. There is a flying car in the sky. A flying car. What is that? 
straight up, I can't do this shit. There was, the cars were honking at it. Like, you can't even really see it. Look, it's literally spinning. What is that? Bro. What? What? Literally, I can't breathe. I'm literally scared. Why isn't just a stroll on the fucking sidewalk while we have mothercraft mother me and my bestie were right there and it literally almost hit the road what is that the fact that i have it's literally gonna oh my god it's coming what me. is it Oh my god! It's coming to What me. is it? Nick, you know what? Literally, you turned to come to us. I'm not sure. It's so blurry and so shaky. I cannot tell what that is in the sky. I do see some flashing lights, which indicates to me that it's a man made craft of some sort. I have a feeling that it is probably one of those inflatable car balloons that dealerships use at their their shop to advertise that they have cars and it probably dipped down and came into the street and went back up that's my guess but i could be wrong let me know what you guys think all right so let me try and get all of this straight so stanley cups are leaking lead which exposes us to high blood pressure cardiovascular problems kidney damage and a million other problems Meanwhile, plastic bottles are full of millions of pieces of nanoplastic that are small enough to get into our literal cells and cause cancer. And if I don't wash my stainless steel hydro flask every day, it's going to have as much bacteria as a toilet seat. At this point, I'm 100% sold on copper water bottles. They keep the water just as cold, and because of the properties in the copper, they actively kill bacteria in the water. And a little bonus, look how sick the water bottles look. I found out TikTok is selling them for $10 cheaper than Amazon right now while they try to bring customers to their platform. So I linked it down below for you guys as well. The deal ends tomorrow though, so go get it while it's still on sale and let's all drink healthier. I still really want to get one of those copper water bottles. I have not yet done it and I really need to go ahead and do it because I do drink, this isn't a Stanley, this is some kind of weird knockoff brand. Uh, as far as I know, it's stainless steel, but I do think that they have a liner inside of this that is mostly lead and some kind of like cardboard liner. I don't know, but those Stanley cups, they definitely have been proven to have lead liner in them. So be careful if you have any of them because that's extremely toxic. Check that out, oh, still. Can't hold the camera still, and I got another orb coming at me right there. They're everywhere tonight. It's uh, October second, twenty twenty three. Thank you. Forgive me for shaking. This little camera is hard to hold still. I wish I had my cell phone out. I could probably get this one with the cell phone and get much greater detail. I mean, it's not more than three or four hundred feet up. See if I can get it on myself. Like I said, this individual has some of the best orb UAP footage I've ever seen. It's not overly shaky. He's got an actual frame on the shot. It's not the clearest, but it definitely is a shot of reference of what is this? There's multiple orbs in the sky. They're not flashing. They look to be a solid color and from what he's saying, they're low to the ground, which makes me kind of wonder if they're drones. But I don't know. These are a little different moving than drones, and they aren't satellites. I'm pretty certain they're not satellites. 
Well, I've been telling you this for how many years? Uh, years. Ten, at yeah. least? It's an illusion. How do you break the illusion? How do you get out? How do you? How does your soul move to the next level? Surely it's not, you know, no disrespect to anybody, but surely it's not just going to church every Sunday. No, um, no. I haven't been to church in a long time. And, Me either. Um, it does, it's not that I don't like church. I do. I think it's a great place for people to gather and, and meet and, uh, and learn. But there's still a hole there when you leave. And uh, always a desire to know more, to learn more. And, yeah. And, um, Positive. Always think positive. Never let negative thoughts in your mind. The Greeks, Dr. Zervos taught me this, that the Greeks would never say. They're so into negative and positive language, uh, language yeah. because speaking negative language, even speaking it to other people, can bring negativity on to yourself. How'd you learn that? I learned it from this experience. From a download. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the ancient Egyptians taught. It's called Hekka. It's word magic. I just, I remember being a kid and I was mad at somebody, you know, 17 years old and you'd say stuff like, don't talk about them. That's a negative vibration. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and now I, I get it at 28 years old. It's, it's, well, it's, once the world awakens to getting that yeah, awakens positive vibrations, then the negative fear that surrounds this world will subside and peace will come. I agree with this. A lot. I feel like if you feed into negativity, it can become so much worse. It can weigh your mental state down. It can just do a lot of negative stuff. It's always good to be positive, even when it seems to be extremely negative. And trust me, I get some negative comments in my videos. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. And with that being said, have a good day.